Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Lifetime movies. Hi, I'm Patrick Serrano, and I am a Lifetime movie expert. I'm Dan, and I despise Lifetime movies, and this is the Dead the Hallmark Podcast. Dead the Hallmark Podcast. All right, we'll get it right eventually. Brandon and friends host this podcast. Dead the Hallmark Podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. La, 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 la. What's up, all you party animals? Party animals. Last okay. month, we had Mommy Meanest. That's right. This month, we have Daddy's Deadly Secret. Daddy Daddy Daycare with yeah. Murphy? Daddy's Deadly Secret. Another title that I'll I forgot. You my Daddy's Deadly Secret. That I forgot until it, <laughs> until it happened in the movie. And right. I was like, oh, yeah. That's, that's Daddy's Deadly Secret. That's what Got I remember. It. Yeah. This isn't, this movie's not called Missing Girls Time. <laughs> it's no. uh, more. There's more to it. That, that's later in the month. We have the Missing Girls, but we got to do a daddy for Father's Day. Of yeah. course. Daddy. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Happy early Father's Day to all the papas out there. That's right. Uh, my dad, your dad. To us as well. To us as well. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. You want to say any, you want to say anything to any dads in your life, Patrick? <laughs> no, I don't have a sugar daddy, so uh, <laughs> well, I'd like one. Bef- you know, before so that's all right. That is a message. You would like one. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I'll, yeah. Uh, you are, are. Are you accepting applications? How does that work? You're accepting you, applications. You applica- are you filling out applications? I don't know how that I, works either. According according to Lifetime, I need to be in a bar, and I'll I'll be sipping my martini, and then a, a sugar daddy will offer to buy my drink, and then buy me everything I ever wanted. Wow, well, for there, a price. shouldn't there be a dating app for that? There has to be, right? At this point, right? There there must be. I, I mean, I mean, I, I know from I Yo know. Gavel Gavel that there was um, seeking arrangements or something, which was for sugar daddies. But that was like more of an escort service. Yeah, but right. Yeah, this is like an actual like compatibility thing for someone who wants like for those two people. Yeah, I, I've upped my range on my dating profile. Wow. You know, what does, that mean? Uh, what does up, up your range mean? What does that mean? What do you like, think a, it means? Age? Uh, Money? I, I realized that my my peak uh, top age was 40. Right. <laughs> but but I'm 40. <laughs> so I was like. Oh my God! I'm missing out on all these opportunities of these older, more successful gentlemen. So you so mean to tell I, me that you basically until the last week or so, when you upped your range, <laughs> you were like, "I'm only dating dudes younger than me." I well, I didn't realize my settings were set to <laughs> no, forty. No, listen, don't let what'd you Dan kick it up to? Forty-five, fifty? What'd you kick oh, it up I, to? Oh, I went to uh, eighty. <laughs> you, you, did not, you didn't go to eighty. I went uh, however high it goes. I mean, I think it goes to like 99. <laughs> the so age like, does not exist. You went from only younger yeah. younger people than me to, yeah, not 90, whatever. <laughs> yep. To I only, went to bo- to only <laughs> bottom great grandparents. 30. Yeah. Bo- what'd you say? Bottom is 30 and then up to 100 or 99 plus. So 30 to 99 plus. <laughs> <laughs> so if if you get to be a hundred on Bumble or whatever it is, you uh, you then can just be like, I'm ninety nine plus. You can get. I don't. Yeah, I'm hundred and four. I love that, but I don't have to reveal I, that. I age. love how in their wildest <laughs> dreams they're like, no one's, no one in triple digits is gonna. You never know. This, right? You never know. We'll, we'll cap it at ninety nine plus. plus, and that'll. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Yeah. That'll take care of it. Thirty to now has, has moving back to the small town. Has that a, 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 a dating a, a, apps changed? Has for it you? affected it in any way? Oh yeah, the you know going from Chicago to <laughs> where I am now, it's uh, the pool is much smaller. So really looking for the. I've been speed dating. Speed dating is what I've been doing in uh, DC. So do you got like, like, speed you dating like, you nights? You go up to actual like an actual like we've seen in the movies speed dates. Not with the name tags and stuff, but yeah, basically you meet at like a coffee shop and uh, there's like a little app and it tells you like, okay, you're going to meet this person wearing this outfit and you sit for like seven minutes. It's like, okay, go talk to another person now. Oh, that's fun. Does it? So it's all through, also all through apps now. That makes sense. Why? So how yeah, many, do no, you, how many, how many dudes are you, do you meet doing this in an evening? 
Well, I went to Queer Night, and uh, okay. that is all inclusive. So okay. I met a lot of lesbians, a uh, lot of lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to read the fine print. I yeah, got to read the fine print. So you got set up with a lot of lesbians. <laughs> It, it was great. I well, met yeah, a personal well, trainer. At under 40? A yoga instructor. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were in the age range. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. Uh, 99. But no, no matches. No matches. So mm. we'll keep trying. That's all right. Trying. We'll keep us posted on this podcast. I think we should do that every week. Yeah. Uh, for the, right? yeah. for the uh, folks at home that might not know uh, about your, your foot. Do you, you want to talk about yeah. that? Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Let's just do all the life updates. I I I injured my. Uh, he's speed uh, the, dating. The, like, he's up to ninety nine plus. He moved yeah. to a small town <laughs> and he injured his foot. Go yeah. ahead. Injured it, it. It's my calf. I did a jumping jack. Uh, they were squats. They were squat jumping jacks. So you're in a squat position and you have to open your arms like uh like you're saying like boo. Yeah. You know. So at the same time, and so I was doing this really dumb move and uh 5 30 a.m workout class that i didn't want to do and i was like i felt a cramp and then it turned into a, a calf tear so i have a calf tear now when you yeah. injured yourself doing a ghost jumping jack is that when you realize yeah. squat jumping jack is sounds like it is not fun. but is that when you realize that your dating profile was too to low you need to go up to the 99 plus <laughs> Yeah, that was the moment. You know, I was lying there with my foot up. I'm like, I think I need to race. My- I mean, I'm feeling my age. I'm going to ask the question everyone older than us is thinking. Did you stretch first? <laughs> there, There is a little uh, stretch in this class that's built in to the workout. And then they did like a, a two-minute jumping session, which they don't usually do. It was the first time they did it since I was there. And I was like, I don't jump. But I did jump because I felt peer pressured. It's a t- it's a tale as old as time. So you are not a jumper, but you decided to jump because everyone else was jumping. Yep, and and the coach was like, "Come on, what what are you gonna not jump?" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, I hate this guy." <laughs> oh, but he bullies me. I just uh, I just I, I I know we've got we're up we against we're up it, against it. You <laughs> you go to a five thirty a.m. workout class. There's a two minute stretch time, and then it's straight yep. into squatted jumping jacks are they trying yeah. to murder you well it's uh mark Wahlberg's workout yeah. school of workouts oh, so he's a trainer? Yeah. Wahlberg school of workouts <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna say the name because they're not they're not sponsoring us but that's yeah, right that's right hey it's, that's hey, right mark Wahlberg that, school mark of workouts Wahlberg. Tool not on our yeah. watch. Pay us and maybe we'll mention you. We did a lot of the work. People can figure it out if they really wanted to, but pay us. The guy, the yeah, guy from the Happening School right. of Workouts. That's right. Go ahead. So, so it's, yeah, it's his he, school of workouts. I'm just saying, if you see Mark Wahlberg with the shirt off, the results, uh, the workouts show the results. Wow. You know? Okay, so you're yeah. saying that the two minutes of stretching straight into squat jacks is is above board. That's what Mark Wahlberg does. I feel like squat jacks is such yep. a thing. You'd have to really build. I wouldn't want to go on a date would, with that. I, 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 there's nothing about looking at Mark Wahlberg that makes me go, I could do what he does. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of stuff that I thought I would never do. And uh, I was doing it for like three months. You. But for Did you some feel reason, better? Did you look better? Did you feel better? I mean... I always think I look the same, no matter how much I work out or uh, diet. You know, I, I, I'm a I'm a Dorito. I'm shaped like a Dorito. That's just how it's going to be. <laughs> a Dorito. I got big, broad shoulders and a little waist, and like no legs or booty, nothing. Just a Dorito. <laughs> a Dorito. That's actually his, that's his uh, dating profile bio. I'm Remember a Dorito. When Panda said he was an upside down top, and we had to correct him that he was a right side up top. Yeah, that's He's right. Like, I look like He's an spinning. upside down top. And I was like, no, ah. that's what a, to- a top, a top. Yeah. The You're bigger, a- bigger sides up top here. Yeah. 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 There you go. Dorito. Dorito. Um, all right, Dorito. Dorito uh, let's talk <laughs> daddy's deadly secrets. I'll give you my daddy's deadly secrets. And I, I just want to, I just want to let you know, Patrick, uh, this movie is very fresh, yes. re- very fresh for me. And what I typically do while watching these is I'll watch them and then I will read along at Lifetime on Courts and just kind of see are we are we <laughs> seeing the same thing. And so if if it seems like I'm I have a different different take on this movie or a different 
uh, way of explaining it. Just know yeah. uh, that, you know, we watched this separately and <laughs> maybe uh, saw saw things happen differently with different characters. What is going and on? I'm just saying if I correct Patrick, right, maybe, right. Patrick could definitely be right, you know? It's, right. it's not a correction. It's an observation. It's an observation. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's just your point of view. That's, I, that's fair. And I also want to say, Patrick, uh, that obviously Dan hasn't seen this movie. And I told Dan before you came on here, Dan, you really need to pay attention this week. And, and he's like, I always pay attention. He said it like I don't normally pay attention. I just think <laughs> that it, with this movie in particular, there's a lot of moving parts. It would be helpful if we had a diagram of sorts Good to God. follow along um yeah, still in yeah. lifetime right it, we're still in lifetime but there's a there's a yeah. there's a few different storylines happening that do all end up coming together but there's also name changes and i just it just would have been helpful to have some sort of, of of diagram but nevertheless just really really pay attention this week folks just really pay attention good to know yes patrick take it away you know this happens in Lifetime movies sometimes, especially when you have parents who are divorced, okay? So we're dealing with a separation uh, situation right D. from the get-go. So the movie stars uh, Steve Breyers, uh, who is a, a Mark, Parr, Mark Paul Glo- Gossler. Easy for you to <laughs> uh, say. Not really. Uh, kind of <laughs> like knockoff. Yeah, brand, yeah, you know? okay. 100%. He's the guy I see the video of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that for yeah. sure. He does some interesting yeah. uh, things with his face in this movie. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get to the face. Uh, and he's done he's done a lot of movies. He's done a lot of TV movies. He's a, a, a regular. And Sarah Allen, who is like a your typical like lifetime uh, brunette, very run of the mill. No, I've never seen her before. So we start off. We have uh, – Okay, we have a stepmother and her daughter. Okay, the stepmother, they're they're like not doing your typical gender things. They're doing baseball or what's it called? Catch in the backyard. They're doing baseball in the backyard. Yes. What I love about this catch game is that it takes place. They are right next to the swimming pool and. There's a whole grassy area behind them that they could be playing catch in, and they choose not to. And they don't throw the, the ball doesn't end up in the water, uh, but it could have. And that's why I always say, just take the proper precautions up front, Dan, and move to the bat to the to the lawn because then you don't have to worry about fetching the ball out of the pool. That's just See, it was that's pretty straightforward. That would be my. That'd yeah. be like us doing catch with right next to your pool when we could just go outside the gates yeah and just do it do it in the in the in the old uh, lawn there but that's just me does a baseball sink in the pool would it sink it or has. would it float yeah it's got to sink it's got a football uh, floats well, maybe, 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 maybe. you know i've never uh, i i'm very familiar with the pool part but not like the sports uh, by the pool <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that works. I think a, uh, let's see. I think a baseball would sink. A golf ball sinks. A baseball would sink. A basketball and football float. I will say I did. I did um, this movie coming out strong with stepmom and daughter playing catch. That was yeah. nice. This was nice. And I'm like, where's, nice. where's dad? Dad's deadly secret. Because so they're, far, they're, they're we're just out baseball. there having a good time. Sure. Yes. It, and it does establish some like, you know, they're not uh, like, you know, they're not your typical right. like mother daughter. Like this stepmother is really going above and beyond. And her name is Caroline. She's Caroline. Uh, a little blonde uh, lady. She is uh, coming in. Lady. She's coming in, coming in, uh, you know, as a stepmom. She doesn't want to be the evil stepmom. So she's really trying. Uh, and Richard is the husband. That's our, our Mark Paul uh, wannabe. He uh, calls her daddy's second wife. Uh, with his daughter that's well, how they refer to her okay. as like a loving term uh and the daughter's name is abigail and she's like a treasure everyone loves abigail her teachers like uh, all her uh you know classmates but abigail is taking a turn you know abigail is hanging out with a, a new crowd so to say <sighs> yeah she is they're uh they're older mm. oh boy they're older kids Oh boy! They're older kids, and they take the, the public. They pu- take the public transportation, the bus. They take the bus. They take the bus. Dan. Whoa! 
So sweet little, Which is- sweet little Abigail is out there hanging out with all their kids, taking the bus. Yes. And uh, the, the older kids, hold on, I wrote down their name somewhere. Oh, they call themselves, we learn this later, uh, but while we're talking about it, they call themselves the Runaway Girls. The Runaway Girls. And I'm sure it's yeah. like nothing. Like, I'm sure that any group of girls that call themselves the Runaway Girls will stay put, probably. Right. Will stay put. <laughs> will nothing, stay. Nothing's going to, they, they, they would never. The name no. means nothing. Yeah, no, like, no, no. If you Not really, important. It's not important. No. Oh. It's just a funny, like, <laughs> you know. It's like we, baseball in the backyard. That's not going to come back. <laughs> that's not. Right. That's actually. not going to come back. Yeah. No, it's not. It definitely won't. It definitely won't. No. Um, so, Richard has a sister. Yes. Uh, the sister is a drug addict, deadbeat, uh, kind of like uh, estranged from the family. They set this up at the top. Yes. Uh, we don't know her name, um, but we learn later her name is Darla. Uh, she's been like missing. They have a restraining order against her. She's a bad person. Okay. Just keep that in your Darla's back pocket. Darla's a bad person. That's right. Got it. And like Rich, I, I like. Uh, so, uh, uh, what, uh, Abigail? No, uh, Caroline. Caroline's a psychologist, and so like, you know, she's always trying to help people and whatnot. So she uh, is like encouraging Richard, like, "Hey, maybe it's time for you and Darla to reconnect." And he's like, "No way, no how. She's the worst." Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, Caroline is w- sitting down to watch her favorite like twenty twenty murder show. And they're talking about this guy who, like, killed his girlfriend. And, you know, it's very, like, uh, th- those, like, Friday evening shows. Like, um, what ha- What happened? Yeah. What did you find? When, you when, when that guy killed his person and then like never, date- no one saw him again. But, yeah, okay. it's like one of those numbers. Got him. Yep. And she gets a call from a client. Like one of her uh, clients is having an emergency, and Richard's like, "Don't answer the phone. They need to learn boundaries. They're ca- they call you too much." And that client's name is Beth, and we all know about Beth, right? Beth has no ba- no boundaries, no boundaries. Uh, she is like calling because she's like grieving a friendship or something, and uh, she this doesn't come back, but there's a full cabinet of stuffed animals. For some reason, then, it, does, it does it does come, come back. back. It does come back. Okay. It, it, okay. There's a there's a, a split so, second explainer. Uh, okay, I might have I might have missed it, but I was like, "What are these stuffed animals at this Beth's house?" Yeah. But also, um, while she's, I, did you notice this, Patrick? While she's on the phone, or she just gets done with the call, like she's in her office. It's nighttime. Um, in her office, she has like these amazing big old windows outside, and there's a flash, a light flash. Did you see this, Patrick? It's pretty quick. No. There's there's a flash of light outside, and she goes and she peeks her head outside, and she doesn't see anything. But that also will kind of come back. Okay. 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 Great. I, I'm, I'm already excited. confused. <laughs> Runaway girls, Beth, Abigail's terrible. There's, it's like I, I'm already, I'm already confused. So, and I well, wasn't if, doing if anything. You, <laughs> well, get ready because we have a whole another batch of characters to oh introduce because we're we're still we're only on the the night the night of the yeah. baseball throwing. Caroline um, Richard, Abigail's Richard's daughter. Got it. Caroline's stepmom. Caroline's client, Beth. Who are the runaway girls? The runaway girls are Abigail's friends from school. They're the older older girls. I'm Allie. I'm Allie. All right, go ahead. Okay. Now, Richard drops off his daughter because she the uh, at the at the mom's house, the the birth mother's house. It's her day to take the kid or whatever. <laughs> he talks outside with the husband. The husband slash stepdad. His name's Doug. He there's like no ill will. They seem to be like pretty like bro. They're like, hey, let's do this uh, business deal together, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. That sounds great. I love business. <laughs> um, and I was surprised that they were getting along. There was no tension. There was no like, I hate you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so but we do that, see that's dog and uh, not dog. Do, <laughs> that's <laughs> Doug and Ellie. I do want Patrick's bro character to make it to a movie somewhere. Oh I yeah, think. yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's great. I showed someone. I showed someone my reel, and they're like, "So you you've got gay characters down?" It's like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I want you to play uh, a, just a straight bro, bro in a movie. That'd be hysterical. Yeah. Oh. 
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna Business do it. Deals. It's be great. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if uh, his no no more questions character was <laughs> no more questions? No bro. more questions, bro. You know, it would have been a choice. It would have been, been a choice. choice. Yeah, a choice. I think the director would have said, um, can we do another take? Can do we do more, another take? Can we do one more take? Right. <laughs> Richard does bring Abigail inside, uh, is trying to find where Ellie is. Ellie's in the bathroom. Ellie uh, seems a bit frazzled. Uh, she's taking pills. Oh, no. Um, and mm-hmm. Ri- Richard's like, like, and she's crying. You can see that she's been crying. And Richard's like, you good, bro? And Ellie's like, yeah, I'm all good. Everything's so fine. Excited. Um, so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. And so, um, so yeah, he's like, all right, peace out. He goes to get in the car and Caroline's like, how's Ellie seem? And he's like, he's, I mean, she's okay, I guess. And she's like, is she still taking her medicine? And he's like, yeah, still taking the medicine. Cause he sees the medicine behind her and she like tries to cover it up. Like she's ashamed of it. I don't really know what the deal is there, but it's clear that Richard and Caroline are like concerned about Ellie and her health and like what her, what her deal is. But you know, what can you do? What can you do? Yeah. It's the mom, mom, mom helper. It's the mom, mom. And mom. one, one thing about Ellie is that she wears oversized clothes the whole movie, like, vi- like very covered up. Okay. Got okay. it. So I didn't notice the oversized clothes. You're kidding me. I didn't. You're kidding me. <laughs> I, no, I'm not kidding you. I will say I noticed uh, that she dug scarves. Like I know, like noticed that she was a scarf fan, but I she didn't literally notice. Literally was wearing like, a, a, a long sleeve dress with like a full like coat like long like I thought she it looked was, great. It was excessive. I thought she oh, looked it's great. It's fine. It's just it it is a it is a warning sign of of trauma when you're covering your body like that. Yes, I I haven't seen I haven't watched enough Lifetime movies to uh, to I don't really focus on the clothes <laughs> well, as the much. Yeah. Um. Aside from Caroline's shoes, towards the end of those movies, those white shoes that she's rocking were dope. But I didn't notice uh, the oversized, <laughs> uh, the oversized clothes. Uh, that's the mandated reporter in me. I, I've done a lot. Well, you, of did a you did a great job. You did a great job on that. Yeah, it's a good job. Speaking of good jobs, so, let's do a good oh. job and uh, head to a break. How about that? Yeah. Already. Yeah. Huh? Well, we're twenty-two minutes in, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to Ninety-nine plus. That's what's that? What's up, everybody? Uh, We're back. We're talking up, about Daddy's Deadly Secrets. We got two daddies Daddy's in this movie. Secret. We got two, da- two daddies in this movie. So it could be either daddy. Birth dad's name is? Richard. Stepdad's name is? Dougie Doug. Doug is married to? Caroline. No. Brian. Ellie. <laughs> Ellie. Uh, Richard's married to Caroline. Yes. And the daughter's name Abigail. is? Abigail. Great. We're Dude, up I'm to crushing speed. it. You're crushing it. I only sent four You're texts doing- in that first segment. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. So uh, after school, Abigail does not come home from swim practice. Uh-oh. And we uh, we see Caroline is like freaking out. Uh, they all, all the couples all come together. They like we're going to call the police. Um, and that's when we learn about the runaway girls and right. how they go to uh, they go to this uh the so a place called the fairgrounds. I was like, "What are the fairgrounds? Yeah. They're not where a so, fair takes so place Doug, once a year." So Doug comes in. <laughs> uh, this is such a great conversation. Doug comes in and she's like, "Wasn't at the fairgrounds," and uh, Richard's like, "Why would she be at the fairgrounds?" <laughs> and Doug's like. All right, I guess now's the time to tell you. She's been hanging out with older girls, and they go and they hang out at the abandoned fairgrounds. Okay, sorry, we didn't it's, tell you. Didn't want to worry you. Like, is it is it Canadian for playground? We no. I, I grew up in a town like I grew up in Columbia, South Carolina. With shout out, shout out with the South Carolina State Fair, and they have the fairgrounds. And when it is not the week of the fair. It's just a wide open lot. Like it's just oh, it's the just runaway girls like, got to hang out, and man. occasionally they'll do other things there. But typically, like on a regular, like where there's a football game, everybody tailgates at the fairgrounds. I, I guess I'm really hmm. southern. I, I don't know. <laughs> like that's okay. okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Cool. So a few things obviously come out in this moment, which Richard's shocked by. Obviously, the fairgrounds being one of them. Also, apparently there is a, a, a scratch, uh, like a cut, like right here on L, Ellie's arm. 
And they're like, what's going on there? And she's like, well, um, so here's the thing. Abigail attacked me. And they're like, what do you mean Abigail? Att- what do you mean Abigail attacked you? When were you going to tell us? She's like, I'm telling you now. And apparently she just got really, like they were, they were talking to her. Hey, maybe don't hang out with the runaway girls. Yeah. And um, I do think at this time they didn't know that they were called the runaway girls, that, which might right. be. Uh, they're not like being like, I can't believe she ran away with the runaway girls. <laughs> at the time they didn't know it. They were just the older girls. Yeah. And so they're like, uh, we would talk to her and she got mad and she, she grabbed, my, grabbed my arm. And they're like, that's super weird that she would do that. And they're like, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> yes. The, um, so – they kind of like establish like you know she's for sure missing they split up like the moms go to talk to the police we meet the police detective uh who i don't have a name for parker. but they love carrying a coffee mug they love having a coffee mug parker <laughs> parker is the best character in this movie what <sighs> parker if you're listening to this parker's freaking hilarious <laughs> parker's a riot Parker's nuts. You never know what Parker's going to say. You never know how Parker's going to say it. I wish oh. I brought a clip of Parker because Parker's nuts in this movie. Parker is not afraid to scream at the parents <laughs> and tell them that they are wrong. Yes. Uh, Parker is not afraid to ask for a, re- a refill of coffee. And, and Parker par- is Parker's also one of the, half, half half one of the worst cops I've ever seen. <laughs> one of the worst cops yeah. I've ever seen on screen at doing cop stuff that's important we've seen a lot of bad ones right like a minor's missing Meh, they'll turn up <laughs> they'll turn up oh oh like just like Has just it been over 48 hours they're dead <laughs> i'd love i'd love to have like a parker sin uh, uh chart where we just count the sins of this cop because they're numerous they're numerous uh and plenty right numerous and, the teacher numerous, the, numerous the, and plenty things straight baby this, the school teacher is a little bit more helpful. Uh, uh, she pulls out a bunch of drawings that uh, Abigail has done. Uh, Abigail is an artiste, if you will. And uh, we see a, a picture of an old convent that uh, the runaway girls hang out at. So the pa- the parents all go to this old convent They're that's at, abandoned. An abandoned fairgrounds and an abandoned convent in the same town? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a town. Look at this and picture. Thanks you for putting this in here. Not a look, look at this. Yeah. Look at this girl's drawing of this of this. What are your it is, a great drawing. Yeah, it is clear. It is clear. Clear as crystal. Uh, they run. They run up to the convent. They see a, a girl with a backpack that's similar to Abigail. They're like Abigail, but it's not. It's the runaway girls, and all the runaway girls are like, we don't know what happened to Abigail. Uh, she didn't run away with us. Um, <laughs> but they they. Uh, interview the detective interviews all the girls and the detective also interviews a um, woman named Marianne yes. who is the crossing guard at the school okay. yes. and Marianne, now, I, can I just really quickly Mary, yes. Marianne is a crossing guard and uh, Abigail first meets Marianne after uh, one of her sessions at Beth's house so she goes to Beth's house for sessions uh, instead of because Beth is afraid to leave her house, apparently. Okay. So she goes to Beth's house. She leaves, and Beth's house, I guess, is close enough to the school because the crossing guard Marianne is there, and Marianne's like, "Hey, wanted to introduce myself. I'm Marianne. I'm the crossing guard. <laughs> You've got one amazing daughter. Um, all, all this Can good I stuff." Ask this? I know we. How far into this movie are we? Because I feel like I've been introduced to a lot of people. Could be twenty. Could be forty. But I've yeah. I know two things like haven't 30. happened yet. One, I don't feel like we've had a murder or, or of any or any sort of big thing aside from Abigail's missing. Ah, and right. then second of all, we've definitely not had a daddy's deadly secret. <laughs> Have we not? Oh right. No, Daddy's Deadly Secret. Okay. I mean, it, it's coming. It's right, coming. Okay, okay. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. So anyway, it's yes, Doug there, and there's, on there's, there's both of them. Who, Mar- who Marianne, who is now uh, obviously aware that Abigail's missing. Um, and she, uh, tells Caroline, I actually, uh, know what you're going through. My daughter went missing, uh, one time too. Cool. Yeah. Like, so she's like, I really get it. Like people say they get it, but I actually get it. <laughs> uh, you know, no, I get it. No, I, I get it. With, you don't understand. I get it. <laughs> like I lost, I lost a daughter 10 years ago. So I understand, yeah. um, a little too much, a little too much, uh, 
Beth surprisingly leaves the house. That's right. Surprisingly leaves the house. We are. She's chasing Caroline around the police station. So just really quickly, and, just to give a little bit oh more. God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So uh, so <laughs> Car- Caroline's at the police station talking to Parker about who freaking knows what. Parker's just asking dumb questions. Um, and at the police station, there the CCTV uh, footage is just plastered anywhere. Anybody who wants to look at what's going around the police station, you can look at it. And so uh, Caroline's looking and she sees on one of the cameras, she sees Beth and she sees that Beth is arguing with somebody. And so she goes to find Beth and it's like, oh my gosh, Beth, that's you. At this point, Richard, Doug, and Ellie... Uh, are also there Three amigos. and yeah and so they she's like beth what are you doing yeah. here and beth is like um i know who you are points in the direction points to richard to points in the direction of richard says i know who you are and she has like this like envelope in her hand and then they like they uh and uh, richard is like darla and it's at this point that we realize that beth is Richard's a strange sister, Darla? <laughs> and she yep. says, and she says, I know who you really are. Her, her the, brother. Her brother. But like, what does she mean by that? Oh my yes. gosh. All right. And uh, she has a box cutter. So, so she's being threatening. And, uh, you know, she gets basically dragged away by the police, I believe. And they're like, oh my gosh, we can't believe Darla was has found us and lied to you and all this stuff. She's crazy. Um, so so they're like, whatever. But I guess uh, Caroline takes the envelope. Is that right? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, great. The envelope. Wrong. So, all right. So the envelope, she does not get arrested at this point in time. They do let her go. Um, and, yeah. but they do end up finding her dead in her house. She's dead. Darla dies. Darla's dead. Darla's oh, dead. Beth, I, Beth Darla. Beth Darla dies. Beth Darla dead. Got it. Did you okay, miss that Beth that, Darla died? I totally missed that. Okay, so Beth Darla, <laughs> Beth Darla dies. You like the Paul, is it Paul who's the cop? Yeah. <laughs> Parker. Yeah, Parker. Exactly. Parker. We'll get, you know, Paul we'll get back yes. to the envelope in a little bit, but she does take the, she takes the envelope with her. It seems and like she this is too up. much movie for 83 minutes. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I've been missing people dying in movies lately because they just kind of like die. Like, well, can I tell you why you missed it? it? It's because they announce that she's dead immediately after a commercial break. <laughs> they come back from commercial break. And if you sk- skip the first five seconds of this commercial break, which I did and had to go back because I was like, wait, who freaking died? Then <laughs> then good luck. You missed it. So <laughs> they come okay. back and they're outside Darla's house. And Darla's dead. And if for some reason you maybe fast forwarded it a little too far, you missed it. Darla's dead. Okay. So I think that's what well, that's happened. That's what happened. Yeah. So um, Caroline and Richard are also trying to have a baby of their own. Uh, they get a call from, for you. They can't. Have, the, they can't have kids. They're trying to figure out why. <laughs> from the fertility doctor, the doctor uh, is like, "Okay, I got all the tests back, and I have some news for you. You're fine. It's your husband who is unable to have kids because of his history of opioid abuse. Oh and boy, he, he was in rehab for like <laughs> drug addiction and all this he stuff. He just her, starts going. He gives off. her so much information, which, like, I know that." Caroline is Richard's wife, but like, man, like you can't tell the, her all of this information, right? Like you can be like, can't do that unless he, you give him permission. Yeah. And she, he, she's like, Richard's not here right now, but like, you can tell me. And he's like, well, you are the wife. So here right, comes yeah, here everything. Here comes everything. Here we go. There's one, one, your husband uh, is the reason why you can't have kids. And she's like, what are you talking about? He has a kid. Richard has a kid. And he's like, I, yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you. Miracles can happen. So I guess since that kid, he's been on opioids. Since then, that well, no, because prior, 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 because he says, I actually have in the folder for reasons I 
don't know how, how he has this data, but he spent time in the early 2000s at a rehab facility for for opioid abuse. So, but he could have a kid afterwards. He he. So he why does. can't he have a kid now? His 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 uh, his juice is loose. <laughs> he didn't have enough. He didn't have enough. Like his counts too low. Counts low. Counts low. Counts and low. The question now, obviously, is well. Then how does he have a kid? How does he have a kid? That's Not, the question. Exactly. How kid? Exactly. And and uh, Caroline family talks, secret. Caroline talks to Richard. He's like the early two thousands were a time. Like <laughs> sorry, I didn't tell you about that. Telling me. Uh, but, you know, boy band, uh, emo, and but that's we, also when he's like, I, like I got the help that I needed. My sister didn't video. get the help, and like she, <laughs> right. she like I, I, and I couldn't help her anymore. And that's ultimately why I had to uh, cut her off. But like I'm not one. I'm not that person anymore. But then mm-hmm. Parker comes in and goes freaking nuts on these two, and it's like. How do you explain this? And whips the computer around and goes, Abigail doesn't exist. Ah, there's no social security number for Abigail. She's not a real person. We've seen Abigail, though. Uh, we have 100% seen Abigail. Okay. But when she's trying to yeah. put in the missing person, like, I guess now's the time. I'm trying to, like, <laughs> put in the missing person. Uh, I- I'm putting in the missing uh, person info, and, like, she's not a real person. So I can't, like, somebody's lying. And Richard is like, I don't know what you're talking about. She is my daughter. Um, and so this is another fantastic Parker moment because Caroline's like, Parker, can you give us a moment? And <laughs> Parker leaves the room, which is just great. And she's like, okay, explain what happened. She That's when she exp- he explains, I, I'm not that person anymore. Like, I'm on the up and up. And also, Abigail 100% is my daughter. And Caroline believes her husband and helps <laughs> helps him flee the flee. Like, they is just under leave. arrest? I don't, like, she's like, basically tells him to hang tight, and they do not hang tight. And Parker comes no. out and is like, son of a gun. Parker's so mad. Like, can't believe that they would leave. <laughs> bad cop. Uh, it's, it's great. It's a yeah. great moment. Um, and obviously, they have like. Where would you go first when you find out that the daughter that you have apparently isn't a real person? Right, uh, CVS. Interesting. Yes, <laughs> or you go to the mom's house. You go, hey, let's go talk to Ellie, Ellie. and Doug, which is where what they do. Yes, they do. And uh, Ellie just literally runs away. <laughs> she just runs through the yard she's like cl- trying to climb over the gate i like, guess she, she tried to climb the gate what she kind of like they see her Caroline and, and richard show up and her response is to run they go hey we got to talk about uh abigail because apparently she doesn't exist and she runs away and she just kind of runs into a gate and she's like Damn yeah it. how have they gotten this far along in abigail's life without her having a social security number it's really kind of like hard to say <laughs> Good, cool. I mean, think, that I think like, do like you need that. So, really? so you don't need that when you're a kid. To you enroll just put in it school, on, yes, you do. Do they look it up? Probably yeah, not. But do they look it up? So That's you, the, she's somebody made up one. She's got one on record somewhere. This yeah, girl it, is a definitely real. She's a real okay, person. All right, yeah. Okay, all right. True. Sorry. Keep going. So, uh, get, uh, Ellie, tell, uh, this is when we get the explanation. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Ellie admits that. Uh, she, her life spun out of control, as as many people's did in the early 2000s. It was a tough time. It was time. a t- crazy time. Crazy time. Y2K. Fergie, Fergie was doing a solo music. Yeah, I mean, London what was Bridge? going on? Nobody needs that, Fergie. Terrible, terrible. No, we didn't ask for that. So, uh, Hey, she... mama. <laughs> yes, yes. She'd okay. be up in uh, the gym working on her fitness. She's not doing any squat jacks after two minutes of stretching, though I can tell you that right no, now. Definitely right. not. Um, so... Uh, Ellie is uh, lied about being pregnant to to stop the divorce from happening. That's right. So she, this, Richard, were, Richard was going to leave Ellie. Okay. okay. And so she says, I'm pregnant, hoping he that he like, would stay. He did not stay. He didn't stay. He did anyway. ultimately. He, he did not stay. He said, we're still getting a divorce. They will, they, he's like, we'll co-parent and it'll be great and whatever. So she's like, well, shoot, I'm not pregnant. Uh, what am I going to do? Well, you her say neighbor, I'm lying right now. I'm lying. I'm sorry. I tried right. to get you to say I'm lying. Nope. She, she full on doubles down. She doubles down. Her neighbor is a single dad. 
who uh, turns out to be Doug. The child is Doug's. He he had a little baby. That's right. Doug so had she, Doug had a baby that he was parenting on his own. So they decide he's like, okay, great. We can say that this baby is your baby, and then we can make him pay child support, so we can get some. Is moolah. that Daddy's deadly secret? That's one of them. We think it. Okay, we think it. Great. Yep. So she puts a pillow in her um, belly and walks around, and you know, does the whole thing. No one knew. No one knew. Um, she so does a full they, taking lives bit. Is what she does. Yeah, we don't unfortunately get a montage. Obviously, I would, I would love that. I, I like it. the one thing like that I would have liked some sort of explanation for is like Richard never tried to like see his baby in the hospital. Like how did they how the mm-hmm. birth part of this go? Like was she like I'm so mad at you? Like you're not allowed in the hospital for birth, but then like we can co parent. Like that's totally cool. That yeah. part is foggy, but obviously they convinced Richard that this is their baby and s- literally just for child support, buddy. Right. D- don't ask too many questions. It was like uh, maybe they had it in a taxi. Like, we don't know. So Caroline is, start- is starting to like, okay, things are really going down. She's, she's like start looking around things and she finds um, some paperwork i don't know now that now that i know that darla's dead was this at darla's house where she finds all this paperwork <laughs> yes all right great okay so she... i thought it was abigail i thought it was abigail I'm like why does this child have all this no vile so uh, <laughs> uh, caroline smart kid. caroline obviously wants to find out what's really going on why was beth who's actually darla clearly she knew that i was the wife to Richard, like what, why was she doing all this? So she breaks into a, a active crime scene and begins to, she goes straight to the cabinets that she saw all of the stuffed, stuffed animals, animals in. in. Are you following? Okay. Now? You got it. Yep. And somehow that leads her to knowing exactly where to find this folder, which is you kind of knock twice and the thing falls down and then there's a Clap three times. It's a crystal, it's a dance. crystal dance yep. and it's a folder. And inside of this folder is a ton of information, including uh, the picture of her at nighttime through the window. Remember the flash yeah, of light. Yep. Uh, so I guess that was her, but also uh, just a bunch of information. Like it says, like she's with, uh, a happy family now and all of this stuff that's it seems like she was putting together some sort of case about abigail and and she, maybe she wanted to get to know abigail which is why she had to, like there's lots of like loose ends here but it's clear she was building some sort of case okay um mm-hmm. to show that abigail was with a loving family got it yes she might be so the mom <laughs> <laughs> well, well, wait for it because that is deadly Caroline uh, finds a uh, address or some. For some reason, she yeah, goes and, to. But this I house. think I think the on the outside she was going to mail the envelope. I believe I believe it had the address on it, or there was an a- address in it. Where that address leave? Let's find out after this break here on Deck the Homework. <laughs> See what I did? See what I did? It's a tease. It's impressive. It's a teaser. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We are back. So Caroline goes to this house. Uh, the house is like, you know, uh, obviously no one's there. She's like, hello, hello. Um, and she hears some like banging and, um, oh, actually, sorry. No, somebody is there. Yeah, she uh, knocks on the door and who opens the door? door? It's somebody that we know. The door. It's one of the, the, the they have a job. No, it's not Parker. Runaway Another girls. job. No, it's not the Runaway Girls. One more try. Richard. No, it's Marianne, it's, the oh, crossing yeah, guard. The crossing guard. guard. Yeah, of course. Yes. And so Marianne's and, like, "What are you doing here?" And she's like, "Yeah, I just want. I don't come out here often. <laughs> Thought I would. <laughs> what are you doing it's not here? a good excuse. Yeah. No, she doesn't really have it. And then there's a a, a knocking sound or some type of sound. And uh, Marianne's like, it's the pipes. It's the pipes. Don't worry. And Caroline's <laughs> like, I'm just going to go check. I'm just going to go check. Puts just past her, goes to check, opens the door, and busts in the room. And Abigail is like sleep- like lying on a little bed, like a little angel, just like chilling. 
it doesn't explain why the pipes were making sounds. No, nope. but we never. Abig- but Abigail is alive. She's well. Was she not banging around? She was not banging on the pipes. She okay. was. She was super chill. I think she's asleep. Um, and it's at this point that Caroline begins to stumble around, and it's clear that she's been drugged. Caroline's been drugged. Caroline's been drugged by Marianne. Yeah. By Marianne. With what? They, they had. Uh, they had some tea. tea. Okay. Tea yeah. Or got something. it. Yeah. So uh, then, uh, I guess there's a part where <laughs> where Marianne literally like punches Caroline in the face, yeah. which doesn't really happen in a lot of Lifetime movies. So, oh, uh, so she's trying to escape, right? Yes. She wakes so up she tea. wakes up and she's in this chair. Um, and she starts like she's in a room and she's banging on the door and Abigail comes to the door and it's like, who is it? And it's like, it's me. It's, it's, it's Caroline. She's like, son of a gun. That's crazy. <laughs> and oh gosh, man, I meant to pull this audio cause it's hilarious, but Abigail, I'm sorry, Caroline. Yeah. Caroline and Abigail are talking through the door and, uh, she can't figure out how to open the door. Okay. She's like, it's locked. I don't know what to do. And Caroline's like, oh, shucks. And Abigail's like, I got an idea. What if you pull while I push and then the door will open? And Caroline goes, Abigail, how'd you get so smart? What? And then they do that, except I think the reverse of it. Yeah. Uh, she, it reverse it. Caroline pushes yeah. while Abigail pulls. Whatever they say, it doesn't. It's not what ends up happening. But it the door does open. But unfortunately, Marion's there again. <laughs> And uh, that's when they get in a little bit of the fight situation. Oh, that's when the the punch happens. And yeah. then Caroline wakes up in a chair again. But this time she's duct taped to the chair. Yeah, and she ain't, going, she ain't going anywhere. She so ain't going anywhere. You might be wondering, how's she going to how's she going to get saved? How How is it going to happen? What are we going to do? So at this point in time, uh, Richard. Yeah. Doug. Ellie. Ellie and Parker are all together. Yeah. And Fab four. <laughs> and Parker puts a thumb drive in a computer and she's going to pull all of like Caroline's data or something. I don't know, but the thumb drive is connected to her keys more on that in a second. And uh, Abigail uh, gets out of the house and runs to a horse area a horse area. She, run, she, run, she runs to the stables the stables, for help. The stables? And, there's, stables? and i don't I'm know like there's a woman mr. in the stables mr. Too? Ed is not there no mr is not there there <laughs> is a woman there mr. that's not there we don't get any explanation who this woman is but there is luckily for her a phone and so she calls richard and it's a cell phone parker says great we can trace it uh, we'll just okay. keep him on the line yeah um, and so she's talking, they find out where they is, that they are, they find out where they is <laughs> and the, the, Parker's where like, it's a horse area. Parker's like, great. I know exactly where they are. Here's the address. I'm going to say it out loud. Um, and Richard's like, great. I'm going to go with you. Parker's like, absolutely not. And so what Richard does here is so great. Richard grabs Parker's keys because they're connected to the thumb drive and runs off and gets in the car and drives off. The so police Park, car? So no, her, his car, okay. but he has her keys. So Parker, the police officer doesn't have keys, which is hilarious. <laughs> okay. And she's just like, dad gummit. So they arrive, obviously. At the place, they see Marianne, they see Caroline, Caroline, and they're able, they, uh, uh, they, they, they get them good. They get them good. They got, okay. Yeah. But they, uh, before, they reunite, they're very before happy. they, before they bust in, Caroline <clears throat> kind of explains, uh, sorry, uh, Marianne explains that she is Abigail's mom, real mom. And that when, after she had Abigail, Doug, who was abusive, who abused me, took the baby. And I didn't know, I didn't know who, I didn't know where, where they were. And I had given up hope. But then I was contacted by Darla, because Darla had wanted to get in contact with uh uh, Richard wasn't able to, and somehow found out that there was a, the. How did they find out the baby? How did she track down what? Marianne? Do you remember? 
Nope. Okay. <laughs> no clue. So like she tracked down uh, Marianne and was basically like, hey, we should uh, get the baby, get, get try to get you back in contact with your daughter. Okay. And that's why she was doing all that re- re- reconnaissance. Okay. But then she it realized doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That part doesn't really matter, right? It, does, it doesn't really matter, aside from the fact that inside of the folder was um, the news story of the of the murder the, from the beginning. If you remember the, the murder 20, show that she was 20, watching, 20, yeah, 20. yes, and the Dateline. She said she said that uh, uh, that Darla had figured out a way for all of us to be involved in the life of the baby that we didn't need to kidnap Abigail, but I didn't have time for that. And so Darla had figured something out, but Marion didn't want to hear it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I guess. Great. So they, okay. so the, the crew runs in and, and, uh, they, uh, uh, Marianne gets arrested and everybody goes back to normal. No, no, <laughs> Go ahead. What is happening? There, <laughs> there, there. So, right. Okay. Well, basically, what what was happening was Marianne and Caroline are having a conversation. The other people are outside. They're like, "We found Abigail! Hooray!" But then they're like, "Where's Caroline?" They all go inside. Caroline and Marianne are are fighting it out, and uh, Doug gets a like a like a knife uh, from Marianne. She has like a kitchen knife, of course. And he starts going crazy. No, no, no. You're like, mixing up two different scenes, Oh, my gosh. Patrick. So Did Mary, either Mary, of you watch this movie? Yes, yes. <laughs> Mary, Marianne gets arrested, okay? They all she go died? back. Yes, they all go back to Richard's house. It's Richard. It's, oh. it's Richard. It's Caroline. It's Ellie. Oh, my God. And it's Doug, okay? okay? And it's at this point that Caroline goes up to Abigail's room and it's like, I'm so happy you're home. And, oh, you're right. And There's is this, giving yeah. her a hug. And Abigail is like, I feel, I felt really bad. Uh, uh, and she basically explains that she went to Marianne willingly because she felt so bad. Like Mar- uh, Marianne was really nice to her. She felt really bad about lashing out at Ellie. Okay. And she explains that. Uh, Doug, Doug reminded me that just because he hits mommy doesn't make it okay for me to hit mommy and like all this stuff. And I said this point that, uh, Caroline is like, oh my gosh, Marianne maybe wasn't insane. And so she pulls Ellie into the bathroom and is like, Hey, I need you to explain to me is, are you being abused? And she begins to sob and she is like, okay, I think I have figured this whole thing out. I think what Darla was trying to uh, tell us in this thing is that the killer is Doug, that Doug killed his, his, his the one, a woman before you found you and now is being abusive again. So they go out to confront him and, and they see Richard is on the ground and Doug, I guess figured out when she called Ellie into the bathroom. Okay. They're in cahoots. They're going to try to get me. That's when he grabs a knife <laughs> and it's that there this, there's an ama- amazing moment where Caroline tells Ellie to run and Ellie, instead of running any other direction, runs straight <laughs> to Doug. <laughs> Doug throws her on the ground and th- uh, Caroline begins to be like, I know what happened. You killed somebody. And he basically admits to everything. He's like, yeah, I killed her, but it wasn't my fault. Like she pushed me and I accidentally pushed her and she died. And anytime I abuse a woman, it's, it's not my fault. Oh. I'm not a murderer. I'm not an abuser. I just have a temper problem blah 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 and Mm -hmm. he uh, grabs her richard finally comes to uh and tries to get him and he uh uh, puts the knife to richard's uh, head is about to stab him when caroline smashes a vase over doug's head sending him to the ground uh and he ends up getting arrested by parker yes daddy's deadly secret yes wow Does, does that all sound right there we go. We got there. Sure. I mean, there there was many uh, false endings to this movie where I was like, okay, we're done with the movie. But and that's, then, the, that's, Daddy's, yeah. that's technically Daddy's Deadly Secret. Daddy's yep. Deadly yes. Secret yeah. is that he actually did kill somebody. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did. He did. So the title was correct. So that is pretty much the movie. Um, they, like, people go to jail. Um, Ellie gets community service. Like, you know, we're all good. We're all good. Yeah. So, Ellie, um, Ellie gets community service for uh, ki- the li- like, lying. 
like the fact that she lied about know. having a daughter, kid, like yeah, all that stuff. I guess Mary Mary Ann is like still in jail, and I'm like, for freaking what? Kidnapping? Like she took her daughter back. Big whoop! Like she shouldn't be in jail, but whatever. But they, uh, I from best best I can figure, Abigail is now living with Richard and Caroline full time. And Richard and Caroline also adopt a new uh, a daughter as well, since Richard can't have kids because of uh, opioids. Right, that yeah. whole thing. I don't know if you remember, of course. yeah, because it's the, not his. The, yeah, got uh, it. juice is loose. Juice is loose. <laughs> yes, how could I forget? Okay, uh, that's the movie. So now it's time for pour it up or put a cork in it. We'll start with Dan. Uh, I have an idea of where you're going, but uh, tell me what you think. Put a cork in it. I I, I get that a lot happened. And for that reason, it is probably better than your average lifetime fare. But with plot holes this big, I just can't possibly like last week's was just last time we did this was just very exciting. Like I was actually first time I wanted to watch one of these in a while. This is not that this is not mommy meanest. I am fine having heard the two of you together try to explain (laughs) this and still feel as though I'm a little wonky on the details. I'm out. Hard out for me. No thanks. Put a cork in it. Okay. Brand, what do you think? I appreciate what they're trying to do here. I appreciate that everything that they introduced mattered. They just introduced so much. Yeah. And uh, you really you really had to to really pay attention to all the moving parts. Um, and I think it was just one too many things. Like there's just one too many things. I think you could have done this a little bit simpler. It said it was based on a true story. I tried <laughs> to find out what that true story was. I couldn't, I couldn't find it, but. Oh uh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I think I'm going to put a cork in it, even though I, I, I do appreciate it. Okay. Very fair. Yeah. I agree that it was like, well, many too many. We love a twist, but this was like twist, twist. Twist, twist, twist. Um, too many twists. If the if the first twist is coming in like the first like thirty minutes, you're you like, know. oh yeah, wait, what? Um, this isn't supposed to come till later. It's a real argyle so, situation. <laughs> yes, and then um, you know we need to talk about about the uh, the the Steve Byers face of it all. His face. Because uh, it's this is only fair. This is only fair. I do this. To, I talked about Lisa Brenna's fish lips last time, and, and this man also has some some plastic surgery going on to keep his face looking fresh, and it, it's looking it's looking scary. It's looking <laughs> it, it, it doesn't it it's not looking like a human face Uh-oh. at this point, you know. Uh, so for those reasons, I got to put a cork in it. Um, more for the the face than anything. More for the we're, face. We're on, we're on Lifetime. We have we have hot people only. That's yeah. why I was in a Lifetime movie. That's of right. Course. Um, so you know when our hot stars are getting to the age of not playing the hot stars, they have to move up to like Grandpa in a Christmas movie or something. <laughs> we gotta <laughs> we gotta move on. Um, you know what? Uh, yeah, it's a triple yeah. cork. It's a triple cork. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much. Lifetime on cork.com to read uh, all of Patrick's uh, reviews, not just on the movies that we talk about here, but on all of them. There's all the Lifetime movies over on Lifetime on cork.com. Uh, and of course, you could have watched this movie and watched us on Philo, Philo.tv slash DTH, the best place to watch Lifetime, Hallmark, Ugh. all those channels. Yeah. Philo. Uh, we'll be back next time with another one. Until then, maybe the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo, go to philo.tv slash DTH. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi. But here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day.